Coach Chuck, how's it going tonight? It's going well, man. Yeah, it's going really well. So got to finish up with the workout here a little earlier today, and guys are back in town. So, uh, yeah, things are great. Awesome. Let's see. Let's let's check that jacket out. Give us a little. I thought it was a starter jacket, but you got it. That jacket's sweet, man. <laughs> that's, oh, that's really yes. sweet. That's yeah. like really cool, man. Did he brand Does he it? Got up? anything on the back? Yeah, anything on the back no, or anything? Yeah, nothing on the back. This is yeah, just old school, just straight West Point. So yeah, uh, button up. Is it buttons? Yeah, it's button up. Yep. Yeah. So, Sweet, yeah, dude, it's so sick. It's so <laughs> '80s starter throwback jacket, man. Oh, I that's awesome. Starter jackets. Uh, one of your other interviews. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, you guys were chatting a little bit about starters. Apparently, you didn't have ones. That man, that's uh. Never owned one. I was so poor, dude. It was the worst thing ever. <laughs> Being poor sucked. It was terrible. Hey, so Chuck, where are you from? I'm really from uh, from Minnesota. So I grew up in uh, Mapleton, Minnesota, real small town. It's about two hours south of uh, Minneapolis area, but about an hour from the Iowa border. So are you by Rochester then? Yeah, I'm a little bit west of there, probably about an hour and a half-ish, but, uh, but yeah. Pretty close. My wife, a lot of my wife's family is from Rochester. So, okay, okay, cool. So then, that from there, from Minnesota, you went to Iowa, right, for college? Yeah. So I went to uh, yeah, uh, a trader in a lot of Minnesota eyes, maybe, but uh, but yeah, in my eyes, it was kind of it was kind of always Iowa. I did, I did the J. Rob camp my junior year to try to figure out, you know, maybe I better check out this Minnesota business. They're doing pretty well, and. Uh, and it was, uh, I just decided now it's going to be Iowa, but, uh, then Minnesota went on to win a couple of national titles in a row. So no big deal. <laughs> okay. So what year did you graduate high school then? I graduated high school in 2000. Yeah. 2000. So, so you're, you're two years younger than Gillespie and I, so you're, you're not 40 yet. So you're a young whippersnapper, but how many years were you in Gillespie, Jack Gillespie, John Gillespie, if you're an Iowa guy, they don't call him Jack. They call him John. How, how many years were you and Jack on the team together at Iowa? So, yeah, I think it was three years together, yep, three, so. Three years, and did you do five years there? Yep, yep, I did five years there, yep. So, he was just, like you said, a couple years ahead of me, so, yep. Yeah, good time with Jack. He's a great dude. What's the John? Oh, Where's the John come from? What's his name? <laughs> oh, so is that his real name and he just goes by Jack? I've always called yes. him Jack. I know there's guys that, yeah, like Zeb said, call him John, but, uh, but yeah, I've always called him Jack. So I don't think there's people who love wrestling more than you and Jack Gillespie. You guys are really passionate about it. And that guy, like he's, you know, you guys took it two different directions. He's a high school assistant for Eric Burnett at Elyria. You're a college assistant, but you're a former head college coach at, in division three, two different jobs, right? Yeah, so I, uh, I actually started coach right out of college. I went uh, and coached high school for four years before kind of getting into uh, to college. And I, I spent a couple of years at Augsburg. And then my first job in Ohio was my first head coaching position at Heidelberg University. And uh, after that, I went to uh, back to Wisconsin, UW-Whitewater, and now out here at West Point. So that was kind of my, my coaching path to, to lead me to here. I just talked to Coach Patrizzi tonight. What uh... – you have any stories from from Heidelberg days? I'm not sure he wanted me to share any of them. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, Coach Patrizzi, um, you know, he would he was an alum when I was there, so he wasn't really connected with uh, the program outside of being an alum. Uh, he he grew up just south of town, working with a, a, a youth and high school program there, and so I got he was always around and helped us, uh, you know, with running some Burg Mania youth wrestling tournaments and you know some of those things. But uh, but yeah, no, good guy. So, okay, so they're, what's crazy is while you're the head coach at Heidelberg, is that when Tiffin added or did Tiffin add under Jason Miller? That's funny. Um, Tiffin added, I want to say it was like the year before I came in, but I, I could be off on that a little bit. Um, you know, so we'd, we'd end up recruiting a lot of the same guys, and I like, you know, Coach Simcoe, he's a good dude too. But uh, I know we, were, we used, to, used to recruit against him, and I know you guys had Jason Russell on too, but he – yeah, it's like it's funny that you know when you tell me, hey, I'm going, I'm looking at Tiffin University too. I'm like Tiffin, Tiffin University. I'm like, gosh, I've heard of that before. You know, I'm like, is that like a, is that like a community college or something? What is that? You know, <laughs> and just you know, just to you know, uh, 
have a have a good laugh with them, but no, nothing but respect for Coach Simcoe. He's done some really cool things there, and they're doing a great job. So, but uh, but yeah, it was cool. We I always wanted to wrestle and try to work it out. Thought it'd be really cool to have the two towns, you know, both colleges in the town come together, and we're just never able to make it happen. But uh, but that would have been cool. Wow, that's crazy. And you guys got that crazy wrestling room. Is it still that tin building it, at Heidelberg? Yeah, so it used to be. I was, uh, man, yeah, the tin gym is what it's called. It. I, I mean, that's still to this day probably my favorite wrestling room. You know, I, it had, you know, uh, had a lot of character, you know, is what we would say. But uh, but ultimately, like, you, you'd know right away when you bring a recruit into that room right away if he was going to be a guy that fit or not, you know, like – if he wasn't down with what was going on in there, like he wasn't going to fit into to our program, you know? And so when I say he wasn't down with it, like, you know, you walk in there, it literally looked like an old, you know, Rockies movie, right? Like had just it was old, awesome. Old, it was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It had, you know, had holes through the walls you could see through outside, you know, so it had some of those things <laughs> you had to deal with, but, uh, but I mean, it was, it was really, it was just really unique and, um, yeah, you had some things you had to fight through because yeah, you didn't always have warm water and showers and things like that. You know, had to warm up in the locker room a couple times, you know, because that was the only spot that had heat or whatever. You know, like <laughs> you had to fight through some of that stuff. But uh, man, it was just there was something that really helped our team culture really come together when you're training an environment like that. And the guys took a lot of pride in, in in that being their home, you know. And it was it was really cool. I really liked that place. But yeah, they they. It was in the process when I was there, when I was uh, heading out, it was actually the year after I left when they opened up the new facility. So I was part of kind of planning, planning the, the new project. And I, you know, really felt like we should have went bigger than they did. Um, and, you know, my first year at Heidelberg, I think I brought in, I want to say like 33 recruits um, to that class. And so we worked pretty hard at recruiting that year. And, and uh, I wanted three mats in our new wrestling room. And, uh, you know, they felt like we should have had two. And I was like, you know, my mind was like, well, you want to pay, want me to pay for this, this extra space in one year or two years, or like, you know, when do you want to, how many more kids you want me to bring in to, to, to cover that? And, uh, they didn't quite get down with it, but I think they got a new space now. It's, uh, you know, underneath their, uh, football stadium area. So I haven't, I've never seen it, but, uh, you know, I'm sure they, they enjoy that too. So from there you go to Wisconsin, correct? Yeah. Talk yep. about that, that process. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, it was unique. I really liked my time at, at Heidelberg. It was it was a really cool experience. Had just an incredible team, and what we were building there was just a lot of fun. Um, still, really co closely connected with a, a lot of those former wrestlers. Um, you know, but there were some other things that you know I was hoping to to have happen at the time, and it just wasn't quite going the way I'd like to see it in terms of speed and and that. And so, you know, I really wasn't looking for other jobs. Um, you know, then I heard that. Uh, Whitewater is open. I actually coached some Ohio uh, USA wrestling team stuff, right? And so we used to stop at Whitewater halfway to Fargo uh, to train there. And um, it didn't work out for the year that we were there, but my wife happened to be traveling back to Minnesota with us. I'm like, hey, let's go, let's go check this place out. You know, let's go check this Whitewater place out. I heard, heard some good things about the school. And she actually went to UW Lacrosse. So she was familiar with the Whitewater or the Wisconsin system. But uh, we had one checked out facility. It was it was phenomenal. I was just like, wow, this place is really, really legit. And then, you know, later that, uh, you know, that fall, the job opened up and it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I uh, made a couple phone calls and um, we, my wife and I actually had a trip planned to uh, Costa Rica with some friends, went to Costa Rica, had a blast. I brought my suit with thinking, hey, maybe I'll get a phone call. Maybe we'll do a phone interview. I'm just kind of one of those guys that, hey, when you do your, your interview, you're going to do it in a suit. So I, Thankfully, I got a call and checking my voicemail from Costa Rica, you know, and and I had my uh, had my phone interview in Costa Rica. Got back, and then the next day flew out, had the interview, and yeah, I got the job there. So it was a uh, it was a it was an interesting transition, man. One of the hardest things is walking away from your team, you know. So that time at Heidelberg, that was really tough. Like we we're literally starting school like the next day, you know, and uh, having to go and have that meeting with the team and uh, let them know that. Hey guys, uh, you know, we're family and I are, are, are making a move. That was tough. You know, that, that was hard on me and it was definitely hard on the guys too, but, uh, it was the right move at the time and it ended up working out, uh, well as well for my career. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty cool, but yeah, white war was a great time, man. It was, uh, uh, 
a lot of challenges. Uh, at the same time, we had a lot of success, so it was a lot of fun. So, Ned, you go to Whitewater. Did you replace Tim Fader? Were you the guy behind Fader? That's right. Yep, that's correct. So, so that was under this, like, crazy, weird circumstance. I saw something about it on uh, ESPN. How weird was that following up, like, a controversial fire? Was that weird? Um, I didn't, you know, to me, I knew it was going to be different, right, because – I knew going in the team that I was taking over was, you know, really tied to him. They really supported him. That was, it wasn't like the guys hated the coach and new guys coming in and it's like, you know, like whatever kind of new blood and open minds that way. I knew it was going to be tougher to win over the team just because they had so much tie to them and they felt hurt, right? They were burned from their, from their mentality is they, they were burned and he was wrong type of deal. Uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, what the, you know, the guys on the team would probably feel at the time. And so I knew that was going to be a challenging, you know, what I didn't anticipate was the alumni kind of kick back a little bit, not so much from the old alumni. We had some amazing, I mean, absolutely amazing alumni at Whitewater, but some of the younger guys, you know, just, it was a little bit tougher. I came in with some different rules. I ran things differently, you know, and I told them in the interview, I got a chance to meet with somebody. I was like, I'm not going to be Tim Fader. Like that's, that's not who I am, you know. Um, I'm going to be a different coach. This is how I'm going to run it. I want you guys to know that. Hopefully, it's something you guys can get, you know, get behind. And and uh, but uh, but yeah, it was it was an interesting circumstance that way. And just like anybody, anytime you take over a program, you're going to have some unique challenges. Um, and it, I mean, it was there was no shortage of that. I can tell you that it was it was really uh, really different in winning over that team than it was winning over the team at Heidelberg. Um, and then obviously way different than you know, coming here as an assistant at West Point and just being implemented into an already really strong culture here under Coach Ward at West Point. So, yeah, it was it was interesting. So, like, you totally could have gone, like, the, the Jim Miller route, I think. Like, you could have you could have set up shop there and probably started cranking out, like, depending – I mean, look what their football team does. So that means the institution is very flexible – with, with how they give grant and aid out, right? Because as everybody knows, Division three is no scholarships, right? But look at what Mount Union does. Yep. Look, and, and, and the other thing is, it's so opposite of what you're doing right now, because you have you even alluded to it. You brought 33 kids in on a class. It's based on how many beds you fill. It's based mm-hmm. on your roster size. Now, you look at like a team like Northwestern with a 22-man roster, it's the opposite of what you were doing at Heidelberg. You wanted to have 60, 70, 80 kids in the room at Heidelberg and the tin shed and the, the you know, the tin gym. Now you're, you're in the situation where, you know, you guys are in the same situation. I talked to coach gray, right? Coach gray at uh, uh, Princeton. You're in the same situation as him. Whereas you're to D three, the clearing house is lower, right? You can get kids grant and aid. It's based off it's 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 earning based, right? It's based off FAFSA, so much of it. Now, ninety five percent of the kids to you guys at West Point are eliminated as soon as you walk into the gym. There's only five percent of the kids, maybe, who you can recruit who have the chops to get into West Point because it is it's a challenge, man. You guys have such a hard job. I don't know how you you went from this like Division three dynasty mode that you were about to create to Division one assistant, how'd you do that? Yeah, um, you know, it was, you know, kind of going back a little bit of the Whitewater stuff, the alumni I was talking about, and we had some really, really generous uh, donors that really were helping us get the goals that we had set forward for the program. You know, I was only 50% coaching and 50% teaching when I was at Whitewater. And it wasn't like the teaching part was hard, right? I taught, you know, middle school special education for, you know, six years. And so like from that side of things, like the teaching part was, you know, was a breeze, but it took away time for me to build in what you just said, a dynasty. And that's what I was, I was set out to do. And so we had some people behind that and uh, raised a lot of money uh, and some goals that were set by not only me, but also administration and agreed on. We hit that goal and uh, agreement changed, uh, I guess you can say. Um, again, I wasn't really looking you know, for anywhere, but you walk out of one of those meetings and it's like, okay, well, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm interested in, in other avenues, you know? And so um, I just had a, you know, mutual connection with uh, 
Jack Spates, actually, um, you know, obviously a former legend, you know, Division One coach, absolute, you know, monster and Division One coach in history. But uh, but uh, we happen to know each other. I let, I let uh, um, Coach Spates know I'd met him through the Leadership Academy through the NWCA and kind of got to know him through that. And um, he said, yeah, I'll keep an ear open. And I happened to connect with Coach Ward. They had, a, had an opening at the prep school at the time and uh when i first connected with him and i you know he's like it sounded like a really cool opportunity i just with some of the things going on i was like you know it sounds awesome but i love recruiting like it's just a different ammo at the prep school you don't you know that's not really a big part of that and uh so i said it's not really going to be a fit for me now but hey if something else opens up let me know and literally it was like a like a month maybe uh, maybe not even that later he's called up and said hey we got an assistant position open we'd like to do an interview with you and, uh, and so that's kind of how it worked out and uh, did a phone interview with them and then came out and saw everything that's uh, so amazing about this place here at West Point. And uh, I was, uh, I was hooked, man. It was, uh, it was a pretty, uh, pretty cool opportunity. And, um, you know, and I was happy to get the call that, uh, you know, that they wanted me here. And, and uh, you know, at that point, my wife, uh, my wife was able to come out, you know, we paid for her to come out and uh, check out the spot that was important to us from leaving Midwest, you know, she grew up in Minnesota and Wisconsin area. And then, you know, coming all the way out to New York for the first time being the East coast, that was important that she felt really good about where we're going to be. And so when we left here, we just knew that, man, this is a, this is a really cool opportunity that fits a lot of what I'm looking to do with my career and the type of team that I want to be a part of, you know, it was just, this culture here is amazing. So, so was that uh, army uh, first full-time job was Heidelberg similar to Whitewater where you're teaching too, or how, how was that set up? I, at Heidelberg I was, I, it was like, you know, I was teaching badminton. I was teaching tennis, you know, had some game day management was working some soccer games, you know, uh, working some volleyball games, things like, you know, you just had some other response, you know, other responsibilities right. as a client, type of deal, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, so um, that was a, you know, that was a, a big draw to here. Just knowing that. All right. Um, I'm just going to be focused on wrestling, what I love and what I'm most passionate about, you know, 24 seven. And so that was a, that was a big part of it. You're right. That makes a big difference. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. The whitewater thing. I'm so confused. You had a full-time teaching job at an elementary or a junior high. I'm, I'm like the whitewater oh. thing is intriguing. I've never heard of what you just said. So no, I when So when I only time I taught uh, middle school, that was my first six years out of college. So I coached high school for four years at that same time I was teaching. Then I, my last two years of teaching in Minnesota, uh, I was, I was assistant at Augsburg. But while I was at Whitewater, I was teaching like personal health and fitness classes, weight training. Got it. Got it. You classes, confused me. I was coaching. like, he had yeah. to go and teach a full day and then go be a D3 no. college head coach in the NC. I, I, I was so con I was like, that. that's a horrible job. I don't want that job. <laughs> I think uh, I think eventually what I wanted to have happen I think has happened now for the new coach so I'm I'm excited for their program it's it's uh, it's a you know it's definitely an amazing place Whitewater is a really cool place I think some great things are going to happen for them they, those guys I think they're going to do a good job there. That's awesome. I'm mean, I, you know it's like it's awesome that you're optimistic about it, but the, the you know the sad thing is you went under there you went there with the premise and you created these goals you hit them. And then they moved the goalpost on you. And that, that, that is the biggest, that's the weirdest thing. Did, did your, did your motion lights go off? You're not moving yeah, enough. Coach. You gotta, off. you gotta yeah. get out there and start doing some spin drills and stuff. Come on. <laughs> usually a short man problem. That's usually me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah wow. No. So, okay. So getting under ward though, when you're under ward, you leave the D three school. Now you're in that D one, which you were in Iowa. You saw how doggy dog it is. D ones, it's the real deal, man. Yeah, yep, yeah, and um, you know, I think uh, that mentality of what was what I experienced, maybe I was closer to what you just said. There's a lot more of the dog eat dog for sure. Um, it is a different mentality here, and one that I think is advantageous as opposed to a lesser standard, right? I mean. You know, our, our first, our, our mantra that you hear a lot and you see a lot probably through just our social media stuff and whatnot is BHOP, right? And that first, that B stands for brotherhood. And um, that was one of the things that just struck me so quickly, spending just a little bit of time with the guys here on the interview, like, man, these guys are like, 
like stupid tight, like just crazy, like how close they were. Right. And then getting in here and seeing them train a little bit. Um, it's just that it is a different mentality. There's a lot more helping. There's a lot more working together, right. Towards the goal. Uh, maybe than there was at Iowa where it was like, Hey, the best way I'm gonna help you is just by beating the crap out of you, you know? And there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to that. And when there's, when that times, you know, needs to happen, that happens in our room too, you know, but, but the, the before the after practices, the individual workouts, like our guys, you know, spending time like legit, Hey, this is where I beat you today. You know, like <laughs> I can tell you like that there's a lot of that wasn't happening uh, at Iowa not to take anything away from it. It was a great time, but um, I do really appreciate that. And I think it's a big reason why, you know, under coach Ward's leadership, we've been able just to keep sailing, just keep climbing uh, you know, the national ladder. So. Yes. You speak of the, the kids there, the young men, right? If there's one, you, you don't seem like a bet, man. You seem more of an investing man. <laughs> if you could put stock in one of your athletes, you know, on or off the mat, you know, after they graduate, if you could pick one, who would it be and why? Yeah, man, the off the mat, I tell you what is going to be the most challenging, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, Man, that one that would be pretty tough. I might have to, you know, I don't like to pass on questions. Either, nah, but, right. <laughs> but that's, that's one of those. I mean, you think about these guys when they leave here, right? They're all mm -hmm. going to be officers in the army, like, mm -hmm. um, and they're not just, you know, I mean, we got we got incredible alumni. I mean, some people have gone and do some amazing things. You know, one of our alumni is a co CEO of the world's largest hedge fund company in the world. You know, like managing one hundred and sixty some billion dollars, like that's kind of a big deal, you know, like, right. that's a, and that's, and that's the, that's not the ceiling, right? That's the, the success level on the business side of things. Right. But I mean, there's on the full other side of that, right. Just the service side, right. Um, how many guys are going out there and just doing phenomenal things for our country, you know, protecting us. And, um, I mean, it just, you can't, you, how do you put a measure on that? You really can't. So to say who's, who's going to be the most successful is, uh, this tough one, right? Because we have guys that are super like, hey, I'm, I, I like this army thing, but man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dominate the business world. I'm gonna dominate this, you know, as an engineer or whatever it may be, you know. And then we have guys that are like, yeah, man, I'm, I love this army deal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in this thing forever. And um, it's, it's, it's really cool to, to see every one of the guys in the room, though, you know, has just got an incredible uh, head on their shoulders. They're all different. They all get a different way about themselves, just like any other wrestling room, you know, but, uh, but the goals and the standards they have for themselves off the mat is nothing. I mean, there's nowhere else that, that even comes close to matching that. And so it's just a really cool part of, uh, part of our program for sure. Knowing that, man, every one of these guys, you know, wants the best and is striving to be the best, not just on the mat, but, you know, outside of that. And so, you know, if the, if they were on the mat, I mean, you know, this season, I'll just, you know, Hey, what do we got going on? We got some really bright lights, you know, uh, you know, Marcus Hartman was our, our, you know, declared all American based on the way they did it last year for us at 157. He had a great, uh, a great year last year and really kind of figured some things out. Really excited for him. Um, you know, and a guy that narrowly missed it um, last year um, that I, you know, really felt like had a good chance of being in there is, uh, is PJ Ogunsanya, but but I tell you what, man, one of the guys that's most impressed me with and I've been most impressed with, and I, I would, oh, if I were a bet man, I'd, I'd put some money on and, and do that if the NCAA would allow it, right? Uh, but uh, is, uh, is JT Brown. Uh, he's an Ohio boy. He's a Leary, Ohio boy, one of Jack Gillespie's guys, Eric Burnett's. And, uh, man, that guy, he just turned he's just turned another gear, turned another level, and I've just been really impressed with just the way he's grown last year, he kind of, you know, shared time. We had two guys that were ranked in the top 30 at the weight class, him and Alex Hopkins. And, you know, we went with him at the end of the year. We had a really strong EIWA tournament, uh, you know, made the national tournament. And we're really, I was really excited to see how it was going to finish up. But um, I, I think he's got a, a really high ceiling, something that, you know, maybe a lot of the country hasn't quite seen on yet. Okay. So here, here you go. You ready? Now, some of these names aren't very popular names that you might not know, like um, probably the greatest military tactician in the history of humans, potentially. We'll give them top three. Robert E. Lee. You wouldn't know that. A lot of you guys wouldn't know that um, because he was a loser for the Confederacy. But the only reason the Confederacy was in the position they were in for three-plus years was because of Robert E. Lee. 
West Point grad. U.S. Grant, okay, other side of the coin, other side, right? Uh, yeah. Douglas MacArthur, Dwight David Eisenhower, Edgar Allan Poe, George S. Patton, Stonewall Jackson, Jefferson Davis, another name. He's the president of the Confederacy, so uh, a lot of people don't want to really put him into things, right? Um, you got to give Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee some credit. They had balls, right? They had balls, and they, they, they went against and created a new nation in the Confederacy, but they're yeah. losers too. Uh, but uh, George McClellan, William Tecumseh Sherman, uh, George Custer, yeah, he gets a bad rap too. Um, John J. Pershing, I mean, I can I, I, I can keep going if you need me to, because it is it is the who's who of the foundation of America. You know, when I I just named off eight ten uh, West Point grads, two of which people don't really endear because they're a part of the Confederacy, sure. but when you look at it, you know, Coach K, Coach Krzyzewski at Duke, West Point grad. You know, yeah. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on. Dwight David Eisenhower, you know, it goes on and on. But they don't pick those kids' names out of a hat. JT Brown was not – you're an investor, not a, not a gambler. Nobody threw his name in on some roulette. They, they – tar- you guys targeted him. Okay, he targeted you. And it's such an intense process, right? You walk into the gym, 95% of the kids are already off limits. You already know that. How do you guys get, how does Princeton do it? Your guys have it at a whole nother layer. The Princeton kids usually aren't waking up at 5 a.m. having their bed made in a minute and 20 seconds and a shower and everything else. I think they got to do uh, do their homework, iron their clothes and everything in a minute and 20 seconds, whatever it is. It's intense. You know what I'm saying, though, right? I'm being sarcastic, but it's intense what they're doing. It's not for everyone, Ned. It's not for everyone. How do you know when that kid? Because it's different. It's different when, when, when Ayers and Rob Cole look at a guy. They got to have super good grades and great test scores, right? Your guys got to be able to grind 11 months out of the year in a uber structured environment how do you know when someone is a west point guy or not yeah so i think uh the biggest part of that is you know um you you learn the place first right so and there's a ton of stuff about west point that i you know i'm you know i still learn i mean like some of the amazing things of people and all that stuff i still learn about that stuff every day about the amazing people that are here been here but um but you also learn you know a little bit about um, how it actually really is to be an athlete here, how it really is to be a wrestler here. And, you, and, you know, and, and that part, I think, sometimes gets uh, mixed up with what you see on YouTube, right? YouTube wants to, to show you the first day that they show up, you know, you know the classic military stuff, right? Um, you know, what they don't show you is that, hey, our, our athletes, man, they got a lot of privileges here, you know, in terms of they don't have to, they don't have to get up in the morning and do drill. Like they're getting up and they're working out with us. That's what they're doing. You know, like they're not doing some of the things that maybe the rest of the core is doing. Um, you know, they're, they're here representing army. They're representing West point by training and preparing and winning, right. Winning matters. Like that's, that's a thing, not just for, not just for our wrestling program, but for the army, right. Winning matters. And so from that side of things, like it is a little bit different than, the general public, but is it structured hundred percent? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's an environment, you know, that, you know, class wise is going to be similar to like a high school, right? You're, you're, you're getting classes one after another, similar in the, in the structure of the day, I should say it's similar to nothing else other than that. But, but your structure of your day is like, you're going to have classes from eight o'clock to, you know, practice time or whatever. You're going to have your break and lunch there. You're going to have some of those things. Um, you know, but the studying afterwards, like, yeah, it's no joke. You're going to be studying. You're going to be working. It's, you're not going to house parties Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, you know, like that's not, no, that's not thing, no, right? so, <laughs> no. So, so on that side of things, like how do you identify those kids? Well, for me, it's, you know, the grades thing, you know, Hey, we have some flexibility. We have more flexibility than probably most people think too, with our prep school and what that allows us to do. And we've had a lot of guys be incredibly successful at the prep school, or, you know, maybe not have the highest grade, but, you know, go to the prep school route and end up graduating with honors here at West Point. I mean, that's impressive what someone has been able to do. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, finding that recruit and finding out what the fit is, is, you know, really making number one, making sure they, they care most about winning on the wrestling mat. 
we can find all kinds of great people that are, are fits for West Point, right? Um, you know, and, and a lot of people are familiar with West Point just because it's such a national thing, right? It's not like, hey, we're just kind of recruiting New York or New Jersey PA. It's like, that's not just a, it's not just a regional thing for us, right? We recruit a lot of people out of Ohio. We got 10 guys on our, our team right now from Ohio, you know, but, you know, ultimately we have this huge exposure where a lot of people are familiar with it. And so they think first sometimes of, hey, it's a good fit military. We know West Point's a big deal. This kid's really smart. He's a great leader, right? It's a good spot for him. I think you should check him out. You know, and my first job as a wrestling coach is, well, that's awesome. There's a lot of great people that will fit West Point, but can he help our team? Can he help our team win? Is he going to fit with our team culture, right? Is he, is he going to be a, a good addition to the brotherhood that we have? And so that just goes, goes out, you know, really getting to know these guys, getting to know what, what matters to them most. Um, you know, if wrestling's not up there, then it's pretty easy for us. Like, you know, um, if you're, if you're just a really good wrestler, um, but it's really not something you're passionate about, or, um, you, you know, maybe just really likes West Point and you really want to be at West Point, but you know, you're not really passionate about the sport. Well, we're not just going to say, all right, Hey, we want you on because you like West Point, right? We don't have any issues filling our spots. You know, we get so many spots there. We don't have any issues filling our spots that way with, high quality wrestlers that want to be here. So, you know, we just got to find what fits with our culture, what, what our mix, and that's guys that want to win, you know, guys that are, aren't afraid to work, they love the sport of wrestling. Uh, they want to be something, you know, be a part of something bigger than themselves. They want to be part of the climb to the national promise and, you know, let all the people that, you know, have anything, any limits that they want to put on West Point's ability to win a national championship. They want to test that. They want to put that to, to the fire those are the type of people we're looking for, you know, guys that want to step up and, and make a, make an impact and uh, want to be a part of that. And so um, it's a lot of fun, man. I love recruiting. I love, you know, getting to, getting to know these families and getting to know these kids and, and see, yeah, is this going to be a great fit? Um, you know, and there's obviously there, like you said, it's not for everybody, you know, really no school is probably for everybody, you know, but, uh, but ultimately, um, that's fun to figure out what it is they're looking for and figure out are, are we really the match and are they a match for us? Um, that's fun. That's a, it's a good, it's a good, uh, good game for me. Talk and fit. How'd you guys, we talked about the, the jacket. How'd you guys cross paths with Josh and Barbarian? I, I know we talked a little bit earlier, but this is Ebonize, yeah. one of our new favorite hats right here. That looks great. Yeah. That's what, great. uh, what, uh, how'd you meet Josh? What's some gear you like from him or, with yeah, that. so I think the first spot, uh, first you know connection I had was one of my GAs from Heidelberg. His name's Nick Sanchez. Yeah, Lima Central Catholic. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he runs uh, some team stomp stuff, doing mm -hmm. some CrossFit stuff now. He's a good. He's another entrepreneur guy. He's real estate stuff. He does all kinds of stuff. Right. But uh, but he knew Josh, um, and I was like, hey, we need like we need a new logo. We need some new gear. Like, and we had went through another company, and I was like, yeah, it was just. My first year there, and I didn't really have any connections, and it just wasn't. He's like, "Well, I got a guy." I'm like, "You know, he kind of, you know, he's got it. All right, cool. Who's your guy? You know?" He let me know about Josh, and first thing he did, I was like, "Yeah, this is perfect. This is like exactly what we're looking for." And so I've used him ever since. Uh, you know, it was probably my second year in Heidelberg, and and uh, you know, I yeah, he's never let us down, man. He's always over delivered, you know. And uh, from that side of things, I, I you know been uh been a blessing to get to know him he's a great friend now you know we spent spent time out in uh, uh world championships out in paris with him and uh, you know uh, a lot of other trips too so it's been uh it's been really cool what in terms of gear that i really like you know yeah i like this jacket you know that he made for me here a little old school thing but uh you know we got the net gators i think i got some yeah got always got to be prepared for uh you know, for practice now with a net gator. So I got one. I have one of those. I have that net gator. It's no big deal. And I have yeah. the cap as well. No big deal. <laughs> he nice. hooks it up. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready for a question that I asked? Man, I, I did this to Scott Goodale for, for four or five years. And I don't know how fair it is or not fair, but I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to throw names out there. And I do this to John Stutzman as well, but does the name, Matt Kyler mean anything to you? Is there any significance to that name? And why would I bring that name up in an interview when we're talking about army wrestling? Why, why is that important? 
Yeah, I, Matt Kyler is, uh, you know, one of those guys that, like I said before, was trying to defy, you know, the odds. And actually, if you listen to his recruiting story, he'll tell you, like, you know, had people tell him, oh, you, you're not going to coach, school. you can't All-American at West Point. And that drove him to be at West Point. Like, no, I'm going to do it. Like, you know, and and so uh, Matt said, man, he's, a, you know, really, uh, I've gotten a chance to meet him here with just being around my first year. He was able to be around a little bit more uh, before some of his travels. But, uh, but yeah, just an incredible wrestler, just a tough, tough dude. Um, you know, and I, obviously he was before my time, but, uh, but yeah, incredible guy. Okay. So the, the answer that Goodale would always give it, and I would be like, hey, Tom Tannis. The name I always said him was Tom Tannis, which Tom Tannis is kind of our our era, uh, Ned. Jared, me, you, our era, like a 2002. He was the last All-American for Rutgers whenever he took over. So Kyler's your guys' last All-American, right? Well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take Marcus Hartman from last year, even though you know we didn't get the tournament. But yeah, okay. Of- but I understand that. I understand yeah. that. I get that. But the last guy at the NCAA tournament to stand on the podium in an Army West Point uniform was Matt Kyler. Am I wrong? Yep. No, you're right. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, listen, I'll give you guys the All American. That guy earned it last year, and it was an unfortunate thing. And the thing that really validated that for me was Roman Bravo Young, RBY. He, he calls himself a COVID All-American. And you know what? If Roman Bravo Young is calling himself a COVID All-American, I think that's pretty legit. I don't think that guy's just someone who says something like that. Or I think that those Penn State guys, obviously they're the standard in our sport in Division One wrestling and NCAAs. But I would say that, you know, that that's a guy. Kyler's your guy. He's the guy that you point to. He's a great example. And I think he went in with like a 500 record maybe or wasn't seated or whatever he did. He, he was like, he had a crazy run at the end state tournament. Yeah. I know he wasn't uh yeah. What? No, he wasn't. He didn't come in there in a high seat or anything like that. He wasn't, you know, projected to be, you know, be one of those guys on top. So yeah, it was uh pretty cool for him for sure. And that's tough, man. It's just so tough. You guys are, you're battling a lot to begin with. And I don't know if kids really want the structure that you guys offer. That's a, that's another tough thing, man. It is. Yeah. You guys take up your kids have to take a full load and they don't get to take any semesters off. And what I mean by that is I can tell you at Kent state, I didn't want to take a math class. I never took a math class at Kent state with my degree. They let me sub sign language in for math. You guys don't do that. They take <laughs> the core classes and they take a full load and you can't miss a class at West point. You either got to be dead really, really sick or someone in your family has got to be dead in order for you to miss a class. And that's demanding coach Chuck. That's hard to do. And some kids just don't want to be challenged. All your guys want that challenge. And I love that. Yeah. You know, you see it. I like how you put that, that structure and that stuff and that challenge and how you pointed that out. Um, you know, I think about it like this, you know, from, from this preparation time period for them, right. They're, they're here doing those things. And like you said, a lot of kids don't want that. Um, they want that Hollywood party scene, right? They, that's, they're, that, they're looking forward to that college experience, right? And that, I mean, first off, doesn't fit with what we're trying to do in terms of winning on the map. But, but I think if you, if you think about, man, who are, the, who are the really like just the innovators in the world? Who are the really successful people in the world? You know, I don't, I don't hear a lot of stories to people talking about, you know what? I was just kind of, going about my business however I wanted, partying all the time, just happened to ran across something haphazard and found the success by working part-time, you know, taking a couple classes here or there. Like, no, you, you hear about the most successful people telling you about, hey, man, I worked hard. I put myself, I networked. I got myself with the, the best people I could be around and surround myself with. I structured my life. I managed my time right? Um, they talk about prioritizing, right? All those things. Like you talk to the most successful people in the world, like, you know, whatever, that's obviously, you know, to everybody's different perspective and what, what successful is. But I mean, you can look at a lot of things, right? Family, right? How, how you raise your family, your faith, right? Your, you know, your, your success in athletics or in business or financially, right? There's a lot of ways to, to measure success, but I don't hear a lot of people saying, you know, if I just, I would have had a little bit more free time in college, 
that would have made all the difference in my in my life. You know, if, if I just would have, you know, been able to watch a little bit more, play a little bit more video games, unless this guy's like a professional video game now, which, hey, you can make some good money at, you know, but that's probably not the norm. I don't hear a lot of people looking back and saying, man, that's, I wish I would have done more of that in college. If I only would have drank more beer and smoked more cigarettes in college, that would have made all the difference in my life. Like you just don't hear it. And there's a reason you don't hear it. And uh, you know, our guys here at West Point, they're not experiencing those things. They are setting themselves up for success. You know, you hear a lot about West Point here set for life. You go to West Point, you're set for life. Like when you, you hear that and there's a reason because of that and because of the people you're surrounded with, the network of people and just the job, right? People don't, uh, our guys don't really have to look, you know, if they want to get out of the army and, and, you know, serve their five years and be out, you know, there's not a whole lot of them going out and hunting for jobs, right? It's, it's more around the other way around, right? People want <laughs> people from West Point to be working for their companies or whatever. Now the way things are, I mean, we got people that they're stepping out in this position where they've already led hundreds of, you know, hundred plus people, you know, if they want to start their own thing, they want to be an entrepreneur and do their own thing. Well, guess what? When you're trying to recruit other people to come work for you, you can say, well, I've already led hundreds of people to work underneath me. You know, um, you want to come be a part of what I'm doing or, you know, keep doing what you want to be doing. I mean, it's just the, the opportunities for our West Point guys here are just, I mean, it's unlimited. I mean, it truly is unlimited. And so you're right. Most people don't want that structure. It's hard. It's tough. Sure. All those things. We love that. And we know what that means. I don't have to fake tell somebody when I'm recruiting them that, hey, we're going to take care of you. You're going to, you know, all of our guys get jobs afterwards, all that, and, and not really know that, right? You, no, we're guaranteed. We're the highest paid division one team in the country, you know, and, and these guys are going to go on to be incredibly successful, you know, after that. And so all those things, you're right, that turns a lot of people off. But there's also the other side of that where, man, people see that and they're starting to see that because we're, we're, we're kicking butt a little bit more on the mat, right? And so we're having success. We're getting a little bit more exposure. And so guys are seeing a little bit more of that. Like, gosh, yeah, I want, I want that, you know? And so, you know, it's unfortunate because we're in, we're in the position now where we want kids to be here and we just, you know, we, they want to be here, but we just don't have any more spots. And so it's tough, sure, but um, – there's also a waiting list, you know, um, we're, we don't have a shortage of recruits that want to be here that we want. So speaking on that recruiting, right? So you have a, you have a top recruit scenario. Okay. They're looking at the IVs they're looking at big 10. They're sitting, you're sitting in the office of, or with coaches, you know, big 10 Ivy league and you, right. That That's your, that's your stick, right. Recruiting that's your, and now you're full time, right. So you, you have had the time and you, you know what you're doing, obviously. What do you say to that, that young student athlete? Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest part is I, I, you know, if, if I know those other teams are in play or, or whatever, right. I, I want to know, you know, at, at that point in time, I should really know a lot more about him, you know, what he likes to do, what his goals are, what he, where he really wants, you cool. know, uh, what he sees himself doing post-college, right. Does he have, you know, dreams to, you know, to wrestle, you know, Olympic style and that, um, you know, all, I should have all that information already. And then that's really, you know, I don't do a lot of, uh, and it probably hurts us a little bit, to be honest. We just, we don't do a lot of comparing ourselves to other programs, right? I'm not afraid to, to point out the differences in terms of our advantage, right, over right. them. But I'm not going to talk about, you know, horror stories of, you know, what I heard when this guy went here or anything like, like, we just don't go down that route. And I think it just kind of goes along with my mentality and coaching is just like, you just got to be really careful who you compare yourself to. Right. I learned this a long time ago from, you know, actually Mike Houck, who's uh, uh, 1985 U.S.'s first Greco world champ. I coached with him when I was coaching high school. And I think he probably took it from Ben Peterson, which it was his, uh, his high school or his college coach. But I always said, Hey, be careful who you compare yourself to because they never, you never know when they're on their way down or you never know when they're on their way to the demise. And uh, some of those Ivy league schools are out there right now. Hey, they've been on the climb, you know, and they've been doing some great things, you know, winning a lot on the mat, you know, but it doesn't take long, you know, for a, a switch, a, you know, a switch to flip one way or the other. So we really just don't, don't try to compare ourselves too much to them. We're going to sell us. We're going to sell what we're doing, our coaching staff, right. Our team, um, our culture, the climb that we're having as a team, you know, having, you know, having a couple big 10, you know, 
dual meet wins, you know, having, uh, you know, having Penn State, Michigan, Maryland, Indiana, all being at our home tournament, you know, um, and winning that tournament, you know, that was pretty cool. And, and you know, we probably should have, you know, uh, promoted that a little bit more and, and saying, uh, you know, made sure that the whole world heard that. Maybe we, we could have done a little bit better that on that. But, you know, people see that and our recruits can see that. Hey, you wrestle in the same tournament as Penn State and you beat them. You wrestle in the same tournament in Michigan and you beat them. Like, um, you know, and so from that side of things, like we're not afraid to point those things out, you know. Um, mm -hmm. right. We're going we're gonna to share the success that we've had and, and make sure our guys see that. But, but ultimately it's – I mean, it's everything that is West Point and, and really just making sure that they see that and matching up their, their desires, their, their goals and their wants and showing them how that this is the best spot to do it. Um, and so obviously we have a lot of confidence in our, our coaching staff and, and our team and what we're doing. And, you know, hey, uh, you know, Zeb mentioned the, hey, the All-American thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's 100% our focus. You know, and we have multiple guys that we think are going to be you know, doing that. And, um, and that's going to be huge for our program. You know, when we have, you know, in one year have multiple guys be all, being all American, that's going to be another big jump. We know that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I like hearing it, you know, um, there's a lot of really funny things you hear from recruits on how they, you know, they're looking at their interest in the school, interest in that, you know, and, and unfortunately not every kid tells you a hundred percent the truth and, you know, reality of, how they go about making their decisions. And so it's really, really important to get to know them and, and, and really, you know, hopefully develop that relationship where they can be honest with you and you can be honest with them about everything you're, you know, you're talking about. So. So Ned, you literally, there's only actually only two other schools that can actually be compared to you guys. That would be the air force Academy in Colorado Springs and Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, I won't say the name of that school cause it's probably like saying a curse word to you. But you guys, um, Navy and uh, Air Force Academy, they're the only three that are actually literally in your league. Uh, when you look at it, um, are there people who don't realize that they're going to get a Ivy League type education and get paid and not have to pay for the tuition? Are there people who are like, so what's your offer? Do you ever get that? Have you ever had, so what are you offering, coach? Have you literally, what's the scholarship coach? Have you guys ever had that? For sure. Do people yeah. ask that? Yeah. And it's just, you know, it kind of just goes down to just, Hey, we got to keep doing our job of letting people know what West Point is and, and helping other, you know, high school coaches. So they're educating their teams on it. Right. Um, being on things like this, letting people know what West Point is, right. This is important. It's important for us to continue to get our name out. So you don't have those misconceptions, right. It's, some people don't know that, Hey, you know, it's really easy for me to talk about my time at Iowa, you know, like, all right, I've walked out of college, you know, paying out of state tuition, you know, got a couple hundred bucks sent my way, you know, my junior and senior year and scholarship money, you know, you know, probably cause you know, well, anyway, we'll get into that, but I walk out of there with $90,000 in student loan debt. You know, it took me till I was 36 years old to pay that off. And thank God my wife didn't have any debt, you know, like, like that took a long time, you know? And so, um, you know, and that, that's, uh, that's constrained our family a little bit. It's like, Hey, do you want, do you want something like that? You know, cause some of these, you mentioned the big 10 schools, right? Some of these guys are off in books. Mm -hmm. You know, I love hearing stories of like, you know, I love talking to old coaches like, Hey, what's your like worst recruiting trip story. And I love Joe Russell's got a great one that he, he shared with me. I won't, I won't send the name, I won't share the name, but sitting in somebody's, you know, house and, you know, he's one of the top kids you know, in the country, in the state, and you're offering them 5%, you know, or whatever, like, it's like, it's just, you know, it's a different world. And so people, um, you know, have some misconceptions about getting full rides at these other schools. And I think it's just going to, I'm going to get a full ride here. I'm talking with so-and-so, I'm talking with these schools, they're offering me, you know, it's like, well, have they actually showed you what they're offering you or not? You know, what we're offering is a full ride. We're, we're offering to, like you said, to pay you to go to school, not just get everything covered, but to pay you to go to school. And uh, that's all your meals. That's everything. Right. And so. And it incrementally goes up every year that you stay in school. It incrementally goes up. You make right. more per month as a, as a, as a, a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, you make more a month 
and you're getting the best education that money could buy, which your parents aren't paying for that. And it's, I don't think people understand that about this service academies. They're demanding, but you are, you are, you're going to give five years of service afterwards. I think it's summer four, summer five, right? It's a different, everybody has a different contract. Yes. Yeah. I think they're all five, but I could be wrong. Are they all that. five? Okay. Yeah. But I think it's like a nine. Some, yeah, I think JT told me, I, cause I asked JT Brown, I talked to him this summer. Yep. He might have an extra, uh, like a two year as an officer. I, I forget. Cause they're all, all officers when they graduate. That's the other thing. I'd have right. to, I, I can't remember what he actually said, but all told usually it's a nine year commitment. Okay. Then if they do a prep year, uh, a year preps, it's totally different, right? Because everybody's got a different setup. Cause um, I know the guys from Oak Harbor that were, that's my hometown near yep. Heidelberg. Um, yep. They did prep school for a year and that, that adds an, an extra year to it. So yep. it, it, I just don't think people understand that you're getting the best education the money can buy. You're set up as an officer for the, you know, like, you know, you got to go give 20 years of service. I didn't know that the the service, the years at the academy didn't go towards uh, retirement. That bummed me out. That's the only thing that made me sad about it. I was like, Did it, does it go towards retirement? You but, you know, JT you told me that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that? Did you know that they didn't? Yeah. That the, 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 yeah, that bummed me out. I was like, oh, yeah, you're done in 16 years. And he's like, yeah, those four years don't go towards my retirement. I was like, dang it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so many people I've talked to are Naval Academy grads or, or West Point grads. I mean, they're just so set up in life. They're so set up. They're, they're CEOs of companies. They're regional managers. You know, they're, they're, they're the boss. It's crazy. It's like, forget Tony Danza, they're the boss. And, and it's just, it goes back to what you're saying and what you're, it's not hard to sell. It's not hard to sell. It isn't. It just isn't. Everybody that's at the service academies gets paid to go there on top of their tuition, room, board, food, you name it. They, they, they're there for a reason. And you guys don't pick their name out of a hat. And I, that, that's crazy for me to think about that, that people aren't educated on that coach. Chuck. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's just part of it. You know, if you would ask me when I was in high school, or was I aware of it? I wasn't, you know, to be honest with that, I, I didn't even know what it meant. And I was, I was really considering, you know, hey, what does that, you know, what would that really mean? I had, to, I had one of my uncles was, you know, in the service and I really looked up to him and, you know, and so I kind of got burned, you know, my, you know, my senior year. And so you start thinking some crazy thoughts sometimes, you know, but, uh, you know, but ultimately um, I, I was really interested in, in, uh, in being in the service and, and, uh, but I didn't know anything really about West Point. I grew up in a small town, you know, 1500 people. You know, and uh, the only time I ever got out of state was for a wrestling event, you know, like that was it, you know. And so first time on my plane was, you know, my senior year at, uh, you know, for high school senior national, like uh, making the trip to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. That was my first time ever on a plane. And so, you know, there's a lot of people just, you know, you don't get that exposure. And so that's our job to to get out there and make people know that and make sure people know, hey, not only to get in your school paid for, but in your junior year, you can get a loan. For thirty-six thousand dollars for less than one percent interest, so you can, you know, hey, you want to invest thirty-six thousand dollars when you get that and just throw it into some investments? Great. You want to whatever real estate, whatever you want to do, right? Um, Bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> Bitcoin. Ray, yeah. Ray token. Ray, Ray token. token. It's you, you hot know? right now. It's hot. <laughs> Ask can, Martin uh, Flo. He'll tell you all about it. <laughs> but like yeah, that thirty-six K Ray token. Get it. <laughs> But I mean, that's I a it. huge perk, right? Like, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely, absolutely amazing. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys helping us get the word out uh, about West Point too. Well, people don't know, man. They like literally don't know that every, and I'm not going to say those other service academies, but at our West Point, every student, every student, not a student athlete, every student who gets in and is there attending school. What do you guys have? 4,500 students there? Yeah, about 4,400, yeah. 4,400 because it's they keep it to uh, 1,100 a class, right? So every student is on full ride. Every student is on – they're on getting paid depending on their year. If they're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, everybody lives on campus all four years. There's no off-campus housing for 
for any students. They live in barracks, right? Or dorms, as some people call them. But All I don't, I just don't. Yeah. yeah, every everything. It is, it is the setup in life. It's like, but you have to give your service. It's, it's about service. It's about leadership. It's about serving America. It's about, and, and I just don't think a lot of kids know that, Coach Shuck. And it's disappointing to me, but that's why we do things like this. That's right. That's right. Yep. We'll get the word out. Okay, do I get to make you squirm a little bit? Hey, Jared, Jared, get ready with the edit buttons for these because these are some, some real good. These are some – I get to go after them now. Okay. Let's do it. So, Coach Gillespie, Jack Gillespie for Elyria, I don't think you ever made the district tournament. How were you as a high school wrestler um, in Minnesota? It's one of the top ten states. It's tough. Coach Gillespie, is the, he is the Rudy of Iowa. There's no question about it. Like a guy who walked on, who who grinded, he stuck. I, man, he was there for like six years, something crazy like that. But how are you as a high school wrestler, Coach Chuck? So yeah, I uh, I made the state tournament my junior year is the first time. Um, Minnesota, you could compete in varsity starting your seventh grade year. So it was varsity throughout, but uh, we had true second matches. I lost those uh, unfortunately before my junior year. Um, you know, made the state tournament, took second my junior year, and I took third my my uh, my senior year. So I blame the third place loss actually on my my now wife. Uh, she kind of distracted me a little bit uh, after my quarterfinals match. So, but uh, you know, no excuses, I guess. You know, right? But uh, but yeah, I took second and third. Um, had some uh, had some tough opponents. I, I dropped uh, dropped matches through there that had successful college careers as well. But uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was a big, uh, you know, like you said, it was a tough state. Uh, it's definitely continued to improve, you know, with the rise of the clubs. They have really just continued to help it climb. Um, so it's 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 definitely on another level now. So what's crazy is you go to uh, to you go to Iowa, but you you're a two time Minnesota State placer. That's pretty good, right? And Coach Jack. You know, Coach Jack's got a heart the size of my house. You know, that guy, he's, he's gutsy. But you go there and you, you probably more so belong on the team ability-wise compared to him. You're there. Do you ever start matches at Iowa when you're there? Do you ever get in the black and gold and Carver-Hawkeye in a duel? Did you ever wrestle in a varsity match? Yeah, so, um, you know, unfortunately I was, I was behind some, some hammers and so I didn't get that opportunity. Uh, I was really close once, you know, I was behind guys like Cliff Moore, um, Mike Zadick, um, you know, Doug Schwab was there my first, you know, my first year at 41 before, you know, kind of Cliff came in there. But, and then, you know, later in my career is where I had a little, you know, I had a little better shot. Luke Moffitt was there at 41 afterwards. So I was kind of 41, 49. And then uh, my senior year, following my best opportunity at 41, that was Alex Sertzis and Ty Hustis. Uh, were, were Those there. are the guys you were behind? <laughs> Yeah, so they Those guys uh, are know, really good, man. Every guy you just named is an All American. Yeah, they're they're pretty solid, you know. I think, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where you know I wasn't able to quite, you know, crack that nut, and I was I was ready, I was eager. Wow. I had it was one of those things where you know one of the matches I think it was we wrestling Michigan. I think was what I had an opportunity to wrestle Tannenbaum, and so I was really really excited about that. And then. Uh, they weren't sure if they're going to go with Ty. I can't remember what he, you know, he might have had an injury or something like that, and end up, end up wrestling him, uh, and you know, and not having me go. But, um, but that was exciting, you know. I, I that was something I wanted to be able to do, something I shot to do, and, you know, for my decision to go to Iowa, you know, and again, limited exposure, not knowing about things like West Point, it was just I got a camp flyer, right? My eighth grade state tournament, I got a camp flyer from a rival, uh, well, a past rival, I guess now, you know, Joel Sherritt, actually dropped it off. He was a Minnesota guy. He dropped it off. I talked to him. I was like, all right, I should check out this Iowa wrestling thing, you know, and met Gable, you know, and it was over. Like that's, and then I was like, okay, I'm in this wrestling thing, you know? And so, you know, from that side of things, it was, my mind was kind of set on, all right, this is where I want to be. I went to camp there every year, did two, like two of the two week intensive camps, you know, I think three years out of my high school, you know, year. So I was there for a month, you know, in the summer doing wrestling camps and and so, like, it was just – that's where I wanted to be. I knew if I, I wanted to be a national champion, that was the mentality that was instilled in me in, that camp, in those camps where I learned to even process or think like that, right? And uh, and so I just knew that that's where I had to be. I, I, did, I took some other recruiting trips and things like that, but, 
it, my mind was just already set when I was younger and whether they were going to do anything for me or not, like I was going, you know? And, and so from that side of things, like, you know, did they recruit me in, in high school? Absolutely not. You know, I was, I was a walk on as well. Like call them up and tell them, Hey man, my plan is to come here. What do I got to do to do it? You know? <laughs> and so, you know, that was an interesting conversation with Jim Zaleski, you know, when I, you know, when I called him, you know, but uh, yeah, ultimately it's, uh, you know, it was, it was a great experience and, and, I was surrounded by some amazing people that really helped me mold me to where I'm at right now. You know, I think we're the guys that I was able to be there with was pretty cool. Gable, you know, Bill Zadig, you know, Tom Brands, Jim Zaleski, Troy Steiner, you know, Tim Hartung, Joe Williams, Lincoln McAravey. Like, I mean, it was just another, just teammates, you know, TJ Williams, you know, Doug Schwab, Mark Perry, you know, all those guys, Cliff Moore, like w there was just a lot of, pretty amazing people you know if you think about it now guys that are still involved in in college wrestling that I got to be a part of during that time and yeah it sucks man it hurts it still hurts I didn't get to to have my my chance at the Big Ten tournament you know but um, you know it's just one of those things you look back and you just it really it really helped mold me who I am and and helped me as a coach and you know I, I don't look back at it and think man I really messed up you know, I, I look back at it and think that's exactly where God wanted me to be and, uh, and I believe that. And any good Gable stories? And there's a lot, you know, and he was around a lot. And, um, you know, he wasn't the head coach during my time there, right? He retired mm -hmm. in 97. But, um, you know, one of the most impactful things, it's just, you know, I think maybe I've told the story before, but, but uh, I just remember after practice and there was an unstructured practice, we were just, you know, one of those days where you're just like, hey, shake hands, you know, take a drink when your partner needs it, you know, that type of deal. And, uh, and so I was just never that guy that was ever going to, you know, take a break first or whatever. That just wasn't who I was. And I think Gable appreciated some of those things about me. And so, he, you know, he, he mentored me in a lot of ways, just, you know, uh, on the side of the mat. And I just remember going up to him and talking like, man, I just, you know, I got a, I got a weakness, you know, I'm you know, struggling with this. And he's like, he just looked at me just point blank. Like you, you what? You what? And I'm like, I just, I got it. You know, one of my weaknesses is here. No, you don't. It's like, you don't have any weaknesses. You know, you got lesser strengths. You're like, this is your lesser strength. And this is the lesser strength that you're going to prove on to make your strength. Right. It was just like, I mean, and if I tell a normal person that like, that doesn't, isn't familiar with the sport, they'd be like, what are you, what are you getting at? What are you trying to say? Right. You know, but the mentality behind his expectation was everything that, uh, that got me attracted to this, you know, wrestling in college originally, right? Like just no excuse for anything less than the highest of standards, right? Even something as simple as that, like, don't say weaknesses. You got lesser strengths. That's it. You're going to, that's how you're good. That's the me mentality that you're, you're expected to look at things. And um, I mean, there's a ton of examples, right? I learned a lot about, I mean, he was the guy who used to grab me after practice, right? He'd be warm up on the air down or whatever. And, you know, he grabbed me after practice and, and roll around with me back. It was, it was great. You know, I learned a lot about, you know, the top position, you know, from being on bottom underneath them, you know, <laughs> so like there was some, uh, some really cool things from, uh, from my time with him and somebody I still, still look up to a lot. Okay. So you are a D3 head coach, right? And you see the level of guys, you see their talent, you see the ability levels. And then you're like, I went and I walked down at Iowa. I never got to wrestle in Carver Hawkeye. I probably was a multiple time division three, all American, maybe a champ. Did that, you know, hindsight being 2020, did that cross your mind when you were uh, the head coach at Heidelberg, the head coach at UW Whitewater? Um, I didn't really just because I kind of made those decisions before you know, I went to Iowa, right? Because I did, I went, I went up, I did a recruiting trip at Augsburg, right? Which was on the top, right? I, I went down to Wartburg and, you know, look at the school. Then really, I just happened to be passing through. So I'm, like, I'm going to go check things out here a little bit. And so it wasn't really in a uh, recruiting trip with them, but I was talking with them. And, and so I, I, but I made those decisions then that, hey, these are great schools, uh, great programs, doing some really cool things. I'm just not as fired up about them at that moment. And it wasn't anything against, you know, what they're doing or whatever. And so I don't, I guess it, it, it was easier for me to not look back at it, I guess, at my career, even 
having experience in Division three saying I would have been this or would have been partly just not how I, I think, I guess, in general. But but uh, but I, I made that decision back then that that's what I wanted to do. And I look back and I think, you know, you bring up the Division three thing and, you know, the level of athletes and all that stuff. And, you know, th- there certainly are some differences. But I think, it, again, it just kind of goes back to, you know, what I just shared with Gable, like the standard that you set for those teams is really important. Um, I think you guys just had uh, Colton on uh, uh, from Ashland, right? The new head coach there just had him on like, and it sounded like he had a great mentality too. Like, Hey, these are, these are guys that, um, you know, we're going to have high expectations for. And that mentality is really key. And I think as a coach, if you don't have that, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get subpar athletes, you know, some par subpar performances if you don't expect greatness out of them, you know? And so, um, I certainly, uh, I certainly enjoy the division one level. I think it is the best fit for, for me and, and, you know, uh, and my coaching style and, and how I, how I act, how I interact with my athletes, all that. But, uh, but man, it, it, those were fun times. I mean, those were so great times and something I look back at is really helped myself. I mean, you think about, it, I got, when I was at Whitewater, right. Ben Peterson was with me, you know, at least three times a week. You know, this is, I mean, one of the greatest American wrestlers ever, you know, and he coaches guys like Jim Grunwald and, and Mike Houck at Maranatha Baptist Bible college. That's where he, that's, that's where he coached those guys. And they go on to be world level athletes. Mike Houck being a world champion, you know, narrowly losing a match to, to Frazier and then, you know, watching Frazier win Olympic gold that year, you know, like going to you know, going three matches with him and then Jim Grunwald having the success yet. Like they did it at Maranatha Baptist college, you know, which almost the entire country probably never even heard of. And so like I got mentored, you know, my entire time at Whitewater by a guy like that. I mean, it's, it just helps. You know, he was a teammate with Dan Gable, so that didn't hurt either. Right. <laughs> so like, those type of people that I got to be around always helped me set those standards, right? Of, you know, and we coached high school the same. I took over a program that graduated 12 seniors. I think that year that before I got there, they, that was their first, like, you know, winning season in like 50 years or something crazy. It was, they didn't have a lot of success, right? And my first guy that I latched on, like, who do I got? Who can I latch on to? I had a ninth grade state qualifier. I'm like, all right, he's my guy. This happened to be Pat Smith, you know, who, you know, now is, going on to do some amazing things, uh, you know, and make a couple world teams and, you know, for Greco. And, and that was, those are the type of people I got to be around. And it's always been the same, no matter what level, high school, division three, division one is the standard is excellence, personal mastery, right? National championship performance outcome wise, right? So um, I don't think that's going to change, you know, for, for me anytime in my coaching career. I mean, I got one more. I got yeah. one more. I, I have one more, too. I have one more, too. Uh, I, wa- I want you to give the one more. You give your one more, and then mine, mine will be – mine can be edit button. Mine Because okay. he's not going to answer – he's not going to answer my question, but go ahead. <laughs> he can answer this how he wants, but, um, you know, right, the, you've been in, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Ohio, uh, you know, now in New York. Where, where do you want to end up, you know – what, you can take wrestling out, right? Cause it, you know, makes it easier to answer, but uh, where, where do you want to end up? You know, obviously there's a lot to it with family, but you know, where, yeah. at, what, what do you like to do? Zeb talks about, you got to visit here. You got to visit here. Where, you know, next well, shop, where do you want to end up? Well, uh, you know, if you say, Hey, take wrestling out of the equation, which is never going to happen. Right. But if, cause I mean, I just don't ever see myself getting out of wrestling. Um, it just, I'd, I plan to coach and plan to coach a division one level for a very long time. Um, but um, if wrestling's out of the equation, we moved to Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, we got a, we got her family's got a cabin that borders the boundary waters up there. And, and when we get away, that's where we go. We go, we get away and there's no motorized vehicles on the boats. We're the only two, you know, houses on the lake. And um, that's a great time for us. You know, our, our, we love the outdoors. It's what's great about being here in New York. You know, we live right on the side of the mountain. I got a, you know, Creek that, you know, right out in front of my house, pretty much I got a Creek that runs right beside me and feeds into another one. And so like some great fishing, all that stuff, right. The things that we loved about our time in Minnesota, we're getting to experience here in New York. And so if you take, if you take uh, wrestling out of that, say, yeah, Duluth, Minnesota, um, you know, but, uh, but ultimately, yeah, I don't, um, uh, you know, we've talked about a lot. Hey, what would it be like to live in the city? You know, because we've always kind of when Tiffin's not a big town, right? We 
we were able to have some, you know, uh, some nice houses that were had a little bit of space, right? And uh, we've been pretty blessed that way. At, and, and Whitewater as well had some space in, in terms of where we lived. And we like that, you know, we live on a couple acres here in New York. It's, we, we like that. But what would it be like to, to, to coach and live in the city? And it's like, it'd be different, you know, but nothing's off the table that way. I mean, for us, it's, um, you know, I, I love being here at West Point. Um, you know, I get the best of both worlds. I get to be in the city. You know, if I want to go to New York City, take my wife to a Broadway play or something like that, it's 50 miles, it's an hour away. You know, if I want to go hiking, I just walk out my front door. <laughs> you know, like, and I'm, you know, we're walking a ladder, climbing, you know, climbing mountains and have some amazing views. And so we, we are definitely leaning towards, hey, we, we like that outdoors time, but I really don't have a, I have to be here. I want to finish my career here, anything like that. I, you know, I'm really enjoying my time at West Point. It's, it's a really good fit. I like working with Coach Ward and what we're doing with our program. Uh, I think it's just, it's a lot of fun, you know, and, and, and from that side of things that, you know, I'm going to do it for, for as long as that happens, you know, and so I don't see that changing anytime in the near future either. So, but yeah, um, hard to say, man, hard to say. My wife did say it's a little cloudy in Ohio, you know, we got a little overcast in Ohio, you know, we're like that sun a little more, you know, <laughs> but man, there's some, you guys, I've heard, uh, you know, Zeb, I heard you talk about Toledo, right? Or, you know, Cincinnati, like those are schools that like, how do they not have division one? It's, it's, it blows my mind. I, it makes me uh, sick actually. Yeah. Well, we don't need to bring it up then, but I mean, those are, those are great schools, right. That need to need to have that. And I hope yeah. we'll get through yeah. this stuff. We, uh, Right. And you, you know, have Tiffin with, with a couple, back. right? <laughs> right, right. Pretty wild. Okay. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. You already got that edit so, button right there. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I try, I, you know, I do a lot of traveling. I deal with a lot of, and I've, I've talked to so many different Iowa people who wrestled in the program you wrestled in. And ultimately – there seems to be a divide between people who are loyal to coach brands and people who are loyal to coach Zaleski. That is it. And I know that you see it and, and there's guys, but why is there such a deep divide amongst old Iowa guys, whether they're loyal to coach Zaleski or loyal to coach brands? Why is there such a deep divide amongst um, the, the wrestling alum at Iowa as to whether, and, and, and listen, man, both of those guys, for my estimations, are really good guys. They're great guys, right? And Jim yeah. Zaleski, you know, he let you walk on on the team. He was the head coach. He could have told you to kick rocks. Yeah. So I think that speaks to how good of a guy he is, right? But why is there such a deep divide in Iowa wrestling over people being loyal to this guy or that guy? Well, it was created, right? Like, I mean, it was uh, – to be honest with you, I was, it was during my time, right? I was uh, – Coach Zaleski was the head coach for my entire five years, but Tom Brands was there for three of those, you know, and then the last two he was in, you know, Virginia Tech. And there was, you know, there were times where it's like, man, do I, do I get in the, do I get in the car, go to Virginia Tech or do I be here? It was tough, right? I mean, two people for me that I looked up to a ton and, um, you know, had a lot of faith in both of them, but you know, I was a little bit naive to the not seeing some of the conflict that, you know, talking to some of my former teammates, things like that, like, you know, they, they pointed out a lot more conflict than I saw. And there were some obvious, you know, things too, but that happened. But ultimately, um, you know, I think it was just created. It was created by that, that time, that culture, and then everything after that, right? Um, it's just tough. It's bad blood, um, probably, you know, when you have, uh, you know, somebody that was, you uh, you know, was Zaleski being coached from 98 through that time. Um, obviously a three-time national champion, had a lot of success. Um, but two totally different styles in my side, you know, from my viewpoint. Um, you mentioned two great dudes. You're right. I mean, Jim Zaleski was a great, you know, great guy from from everything that all my interactions and his interactions with me, like, was great. You know, Tom Brand's the same thing. You know, you hear people talk about him and that don't know him and you'll hear nothing but, oh, he's, he's this, he's that crazy negative connotations, you know, but for me, it was always like, man, this dude loves his team. He loves his guys and he's willing to do whatever it takes. And so from that side of things, um, I, I had, you know, I always knew where I stood with coach brands. I appreciated that. And, uh, you know, I had nothing but love, you know, for him as well. And so, 
but yeah, looking back at it, yeah, there's, there's probably more things going on, but you know, what transpired after that, you know, in terms of what interactions with alumni, I don't, I'm not real sure um, what's behind that, but I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. There's no doubt that that's, that that's a thing, but um, you know, for me, it's like, Hey, I got, I got mad respect for both those guys. Um, and uh, you know, it's just uh I kind of steer clear of, of drama as much as I can at any point in my life. And so, you know, for me, I'm, you know, I don't know why you can't be loyal to both of those dudes. Um, they both gave me a lot and I got, I got nothing but, uh, you know, good things to say about both of those guys. And so um, it's hard to say because I, I haven't been a part of that, you know, but I know it's there. Um, I know it exists and I, I wish the best for both of them. You know, I'm glad to see coach brands at Iowa, you know, it was, it was, an interesting path and how it went down. I don't know the details of, of all that, but that's probably has something to do with it too. Right. In terms of how coach Celeste was let go and, and how, how Tom came in and, and, and all that, how all that transpired. But I, I don't really even know any of the details. I'd only be speculating on any of that, but it's uh yeah, it is what it is. It's uh it's unfortunate. You know, those are, those are the comings and goings of coaches. You know, I always, it's one of the things that kind of drives me nuts about listening to coaches on interviews uh, that take over programs, you know, um, just like the, the constant talk of, well, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have my guys yet. You know, I was, I came, it's like, well, you took over the program, dude. Like they're your, like, they're your guys, you know? And, and yeah, there's a standard that needs to be set. And if they don't follow it, great. I, you know, I got no problem with making changes, you know, and, and, you know, if somebody needs to remove the team, you know, but like, um, just that, that mentality I've never understood, you know, the, the, Hey, these aren't my guys yet. You know, um, that would have been easy for me to say at Whitewater because the transition wasn't real smooth. These aren't my guys, but I mean, I took, you know, took everything in it and those guys were successful and they had some other things going on that, you know, I wish they didn't, you know, but ultimately like they were my, that's, that's my team, you know, and those are my guys. And so, um, you know, I think when, uh, when coach brands took over, um, you know, there was definitely a, a change and I had some, he brought some guys with him to VT, which really cat bolted them right away, which is, I was happy to see, you know, I wanted at that time, I wasn't coaching division one. So, you know, I was a fan now, I, you know, now I'm, I'm just looking for the opportunity we get to wrestle them again. You know, I got to, to be heads up with them with Marcus Hartman and Caleb Young in the Midlands finals last year. And, uh, you know, that one, we lost that one over time, but looking forward to uh, the next opportunity. So are you team brands or are you team Zaleski or don't you subscribe to that? Yeah, I don't, I don't really describe to that, subscribe to that. You know, if, uh, even if one of those guys asked me, you know, if Tom Brands came up to me or, or Jim Zaleski came up to me and said, are you my guy or are you my, whatever, like, I just, I just tell him I love him. Hey, I love you coach. You know, like <laughs> what well, my relationship with you has no, and not, not that they would ever do that. Right. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying a hypothetical, like in that situation, I would, you know, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't jump camp and say, I'm here, I'm here with you or I'm there with them. You know, it's like, love both those guys. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't subscribe to the, this versus that type of deal. That is about as good as you could have answered that question. I don't think there needs to be any edit button no, on that no, because no. that is excellent. That's an excellent answer, seriously. And, and a lot of those guys can't, they can't answer like that, man. It's one or the other. It's kind of wild, Ned, that, that you, you know, and, and you didn't, you weren't like, you know, Charlie Agazino for defense soap. I was like, are you a team bar or team body wash? Well, he's team bar, but I like team body wash. But, you know, like some politician answer, that's like, that's a genuine, you know, a genuine heartfelt answer. You know what I mean? It wasn't like dodgy or anything, you know, and, and I believe that's how you honestly feel about it. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I you know, um, I want to be as genuine as possible. And, and I think that's really important in any relationships you're building, you know, this is a relationship game. The sport of wrestling is a relationship game on every level, right? Building with your athletes and recruits, you know, your love with everybody. And so um, for me, it's, you know, those relationships will always be there. And, and uh, you know, it's unfortunate that other guys, uh, you know, don't think that way. Cause I think, I think that's, what's going to really help our sport grow. And uh, you know, if we get everybody behind, you know, this together and, and helping each other out, helping build those relationships, then great things are going to happen for our sport. If we keep having uh, some of the other side of things and, and it's, uh, I don't think it's going to help us, uh, 
you know, fight through some of the things we're having to fight through right now, you know, uh, with having some programs drop because of this whole COVID situation or, or that being used as a cop out or whatever it is, right? Like bottom line is we're losing programs and uh, more than we need to. And we're gaining some programs too. NWCA is doing some great work, you know, but the division one level needs to step it up and, and get some more programs going. Awesome coach. Thank you so much for coming on and, and uh, educating people about West Point wrestling and West Point, the institution, everything you do and your journey, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. I thank you guys. I, I appreciate everything you guys are doing and, and uh, glad you guys are uh, connected with, uh, with Josh and he's hooking you guys up. Uh, he's just doing a phenomenal job and obviously would encourage anybody that uh, isn't uh, aware of what can barbarian can do for you that they make sure they get out and, Give Josh a call, man. He'll hook you guys up, no doubt. But uh, I haven't hopped on the defense soap, you know, thing yet. I might have to, you know, I might have to check that out. And so I was waiting. I was waiting for the cam, the Zeb cam with the, <laughs> you know, the drop in this year for uh, Iron Man, but the Iron Man got canceled. Uh, I'm yeah. going to get you now. I'm going to get you. I'm going to. I'm going to go peppermint or original or body wash or bar. I'll get you. I'm going to get you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks coach. Uh, you know, when we started yeah, this thanks. talking with Josh, you know, he mentioned you, you know, one of the first ones to get on here. So I'm, I'm glad we can get you on here. I've been looking forward to it, uh, talking and, and hearing, hearing what you guys got going on there. So appreciate your time, man. Well, thank you guys for everything you're doing, man. You guys are the salt of the earth in terms of you know, what we just talked about, the growth of the sport. And it's, uh, it's fun to see what you guys are doing and, and, uh, keep it rolling, man. You guys are doing great.